Uh, next up is going to be Andrew Fuller, who has also grown up at Code Mash. His mom has helped uh, for many years in Kids Mash, and he now uh, is doing rocket. You can start bringing that stuff up. I will give you a couple pointers for rocket science. Uh, a, pointy end goes up. He'll show you that in a second. B, uh, a million things need to go right for rockets to work, and only one needs to go wrong for it to not work, just like software. With that, I give you Andrew Fuller. All right. Yep. Do you need me to bring up the other one? OK. Sound working? There we go. All right, so this is my high-powered rocketry talk, uh, part two. The first part I gave last year, uh, where I talked about uh, some of the things I've done on the rocket team at my university, and when this rocket was only three feet tall. So to go a little bit back, I have been part of the University of Akron's rocket team, Akronauts, for about three years. I am going on my second year as the solid propulsion lead, and we pretty much have three main projects uh, going on where we have an emergent series, which is our solid rocket uh, build going up to eventually a space shot. And I will show a couple of videos of our past successes and our future plans. Uh, we have competed in the Spaceport America Cup competition with this is our team that went this past year where we got second place in our category. And then finally, over the past couple years, we have been developing a liquid engine uh, completely student designed. And what I didn't get to show uh, last year was some of the videos. Um, but here is the Emergence One rocket, which launched, I believe, about two and a half years ago. Our second launch. So I guess both at the same time, but yeah. So those rockets, you can see they went uh, 14,000 feet, 22,000 feet, and 38,000 feet. Our next rocket that we planned is going to about 80 or 100,000 feet. And we hope to launch that later this year. We've also done some static fires where we are not uh, launching to the air, but we are testing our components. So uh, we motor we tested for competition, um, where we got the static fire. Uh, we've done the liquid engine. Uh, with a Hornet, uh, where it was regeneratively cooled and 3D printed out of a copper alloy. And then our Venom, here we go. So that will hopefully power our launch that we plan to do uh, this upcoming spring. And then for my personal endeavors, I have, as you can see, built uh, these two rockets, where I have completely or I've successfully done three launches with this rocket um, to a few thousand feet each time, and I've achieved uh, level certifications that allow me to launch bigger and bigger rockets. Um, but here are the videos of the first launch. The second launch I did in California. And the third launch, which I did less than a month ago down in Tripoli, Mid-Ohio, a few hours away from here. This propellant is absolutely awesome. This will make my day. Range is clear, sky is clear. Going in five, four, three, two, one. And all of those rockets were successfully recovered under the parachutes. And that leads to my final uh, build for the certifications, where I plan to launch this rocket <laughs> up to about 9,000 feet, almost reaching the speed of sound, uh, using an M-class motor. Uh, I've nicknamed this the Goblin Tinkerer, in reference to Terraria, because the original build was a kit called the Goblin. And this I have built entirely myself, and uh, designed in a program called Open Motor to uh, get altitude estimates and speed, and then designed entirely in SolidWorks, so I know that all the parts fit together, the avionics uh, fit, and I plan to launch this hopefully in a few months to get my final level three certification. Thank you.
Great job, Andrew. Uh, some of those launches were in California. Do you just check that on the plane? Is that how that works? Do you? TSA is like, uh. And uh, his mom told me that uh, his solid rocket fuel now is in their garage. So I assume your home insurance company knows about that. 